Hey golfers, and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts Podcast. It is episode 52, talking about some golf clubs today. Um, it is, well, now we're past the halfway point of 2024 um, into July, where I guess for us up here in the north, it is prime golf season. Um, and because of that, we had to kind of, you know, go over, back over through the year and see what clubs have been. I guess received the best um, in the fitting bays. And so we have Kevin Kraft with us. Um, if you've been watching or listening at all in the last year plus, you know who Kevin is. Um, he has recently fl flown in from the U.S. Senior Open. Guy knows a little bit about what he's talking about here in terms of club fitting, playing golf, shooting good scores. So um, how are things for you, Mr. Kraft? Things are good. Yeah? Yeah. Golf is uh, golf's pretty much the only thing I'd know how to do so well yeah yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> i guess uh because anything we've we haven't really done anything besides golf necessarily I, for I you know whether it's don't. talking about golf or I mean, it's making videos about golf clubs I, I listen to music that you know nothing about correct and we, don't I, need to, we do we do not need to rehash that conversation movies that you have not seen yes um, we, we don't, don't watch soccer and that's really about it okay i'm, I'm kind of a homebody and if i'm yeah i would say are you like a an ipa connoisseur would that be fair yeah that's say? probably fair yeah okay I, so they do that drink going my too. fair bit of beer yeah yeah okay so there's that's kind of the summation of kevin craft right there <laughs> golf beer soccer dogs music a little bit yeah yeah i can get behind most of those things i'm still trying sure. to you know the music thing yeah, I'm not you got, there. You got we're, we're, there. We're not really on the same wavelength. <laughs> I'm probably several wavelengths away from you. But um, so the golf part, the yeah. club fitting part is where we're going to spend a lot of our time here in this episode because okay. what I wanted to do was kind of go through each category. So kind of drivers, fairy woods, you know, hybrids or maybe utility irons kind of mixed into one, um, irons down to potter and just, you know, kind of have you sort of maybe call out or maybe discuss some of your favorite um options so far since we're at the halfway point kind of like the first half winners um of each category um because you know we we see these cycles of over time these brands kind of go I, I don't you know they can become more popular or, mm -hmm. or their perception is a little bit better and they kind of it, it goes in waves it's not usually seen starkly year after year but you see it gradually go up and down a little bit so i think and the, the the brand I'm thinking of is like Shrixon, where with their irons the last few years, I know there's been a certain. I, I think the hard the avid golfer is much more aware of Shrixon irons in recent years than maybe before. I think the ZX series a couple years ago, and now the Mark II models have really um, elevated that. So I'm kind of checking in on that with just uh, any any of these brands maybe popping up for you that um, typically maybe haven't is kind of. And what I'm really looking forward to seeing what your answers are to some of these. So, um, okay. so driver, we'll start there. Um, I know you play dark speed and you've had really good things to say about yes. Cobra dark speed. Yeah. So I don't know if that's your winner or not, but I certainly would uh, not be surprised if it is. Well, it's certainly not a loser. Yeah. Um, winner for the year so far. It's kind of neck and neck uh, from my perspective between ping and Callaway. Okay. Um, when Ping's putting out a driver with with ten thousand MOI, uh, people of of the the golf world should rejoice because <laughs> Ping makes such a forgiving club anyway. When they make something that's even yet again further more forgiving, I mean, how can you not love it? Yeah, I mean, I play it and I love it. <clears throat> um, and I've said I've kind of commented on this before. For me, that the G four thirty Max ten K has been. The, the main difference is that so my common miss with the sim 2 which was my previous driver was off the toe which it was actually pretty good off the toe i thought yeah. um where it definitely dove out of the sky a little bit but i thought it, it really retained the you know i guess dispersion or, or it kept the ball relatively straight you know you see a lot of the kind of the diving left situation there but um and now with this with the 10k it's it's almost like the ball flight doesn't change from the middle of the face you know um, and so that to me is the biggest thing. I rarely, my, that's kind of how it is for me through the bag is my miss is towards the toe with about everything. Yeah. Um, and so the, the performance with the driver has been great. I have it. I've 
I would say if you really were to dive into the numbers, I've probably lost a little bit of distance, but that's because I went up and lost from eight to nine, and okay. I'm actually making a concerted effort to hit fairways this year no. <laughs> with the driver. Which How's is, that working? Um, it's going well. It's do, going do you well. Find, do you so, find the fairway as a uh, as a good way to go? So yeah, yeah, typically <laughs> it is. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, most of the time. So. <laughs> I would say the driver, uh, I know from, a, I can bring up my Arcos, but from a strokes gained perspective on Arcos compared to a scratch, I am a plus driver. And nice. so as a 1.0, as of this moment, handicap, um, that means a driver or driving is one of the strengths of my game. So, um, yeah, I got that going for me. What I like so much about the the 10K is there's always been this notion that you could you can't have forgiveness and distance right. together. And I think that, Ping fully dispelled that myth with the 10K because right. I've seen kind of on average around 2,500, 2,600 RPM spin. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a pretty good number for most people with spin being, to an extent, forgiveness in and of itself. Yeah. You know, you don't want to get somebody into something that's 1700 RPM if they're not squaring it up perfectly every time. Right. You got to be very consistent. You're if that's talking your spin about, rate. yeah, you're talking about really big spray path, right? And that's not what we want. We want as much consistency mm -hmm. as we can get. Number one thing that people ask for when they come in for club fitting is they want consistency. Yeah. So they drop the C word on me and I drop the P word back on them. You know, ultimately it's practice. There you go. But if we can get a golf club that is more forgiving, and helps with, you know, maybe a toe miss. Uh, if we can get you in some more fairways, then uh, yeah. good things happen. I have hit more fairways this year. That's a, that's a fact. Um, the what, what surprises me about, because I think what you're, you're alluding to is consistency on the distance. I, I may have misworded that where I maybe am losing distance with my 10K. I say that in that the Sim 2 drives I hit good mm -hmm. were launched. Like sure. There's a ton of ball speed there. Um, you know, I could hit. I could hit that thing three twenty, three thirty when I hit it good on a you know neutral, um, no wind situation. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I would. I guess I could. You know, there's probably some numbers to back this up. But the average distance went on the misses is certainly better with the 10k. And so it's uh you know there's a lot of good with that driver. But I think you mentioned Callaway. Yeah. And because that AI smart face seems to be something a lot of golfers are taking a liking to for sure and the fitters it certainly has seemed to do pretty close to what they were suggesting it was going to do mm -hmm. um you know ball speeds have been really good uh, across the face and you know ping really put on a, a big push early and to me callaway's really kind of put on a, a good solid run through the kind of the latter half of the first half of the year mm -hmm. um i'm really interested to see once we get our hands on the the new max triple diamond yes um which we have done some testing on because um, that one yeah. you know up until the 10k ping came out the lst was really my number one seller you get a lot of people that need spin reduction but also need you know potential flight correction and forgiveness that was a driver that had everything right yeah. so um you know if if callaway is able to have this this next iteration of a triple diamond be even more forgiving that's that yeah. just opens up a a whole new world of of being able to give people that low spin with yeah. more forgiveness I actually it was, it was funny because we had so we did a video with uh jake montgomery and on the uh, triple diamond max or max mm -hmm. triple diamond and one of the commenters right away was like well this is annoying because i just i just got my ai smoke max and uh my only the only thing i needed was a little bit lower spin and so you know i adjusted the loft down or whatever to make that happen and now i've got the max triple diamond yeah um, so he was <laughs> he's kind of in a way i don't think he was super serious about that because yeah. i mean come on this i could have had the this driver that fit me but it's one of those things, right? We we make these purchases, and who knows what's coming next? Yep. It's like buying a computer, you know. Something better always seems right. to come along. So yeah, yeah, you're right. Just have to be prepared. Yeah, yeah. It's uh. So that one I know is I think it's I don't know what the availability is from Callaway on that. I know it's maybe potentially limited compared to the others, but yeah. Um, the 
it seems like it's a big winner and it's kind of yeah. a, a sort of uh kind of back to that epic max ls rogue st max or rogue st ls triple mm -hmm. diamond or mm -hmm. whatever the um nomenclature was they had a max head that was also low spin yeah. that um seemingly it was was good for them and then they kind of went away from that naming and making the triple diamond part of the, the fold so um yeah we'll see what they you know how much that one's put in play how much you know availability that is for fittings because yeah. it seems like it'll be a highly demanded one yeah for sure so those were really the two that were have kind of stood out that said you know dark speed's really really good mm -hmm. um the tailor made's been really good for certain people and uh i've had some really good wins with that uh titleist has stayed right in the thick yeah. of things even though they're at the very tail end of their their two-year life cycle yep. um you know you just can't count them out kind of ever no and uh yeah so there's there's really good there's really good drivers across the board it really does i mean i say it all the time it comes down to what you like the look feel sound of and then we make sure that everything's kind of yep. maxed out as we can as right. we can make it yep um it, there are so many good options um I think we had kind of said that this is sort of the the year of the driver in a lot of respects and so um i mean you you've got the dark speed that you love i got the 10k that i love um but you know there's a lot of people out there that swear by the ai smoke series yep. and so it's i mean go get fit if you're looking for a new driver it's kind of the because you're going to have an option and there's going to be something that you love yep. whether it's any of these models or maybe it's something else we even mentioned yeah there's some good ones so um Things are now, this is kind of where it breaks down a little bit more because I feel like brands and, and you know, OEMs and, and companies get more um, distinct or different when we get down to shorter clubs, fairways, hybrids. Um, and these clubs also might last longer in the sense of yeah, you see a lot of tour, prayer, tour players sticking with hybrids or fairy woods longer than other clubs and so is there a fairy wood or fairy maybe this you know could be a hybrid fairy wood that you've kind of taken a liking to this year i like most anything with adjustability yeah. uh, the ping fairway woods have been very very consistent they look clean they feel good they sound good they go very very well um, with good options uh, all throughout you know if you're looking for you know distance off the deck uh, it's, it's kind of hard to beat either you know ai smoke or the qi 10 tours yeah they're both just workhorses mm -hmm. in terms of of what they're what you're potentially able to get distance wise so if you're looking for that fairway wood that really gets you moving right good combination of things for off the tee and coming into the greens um those are my two biggest go-tos yeah. honestly um the qi 10 definitely a nice step up from from stealth 2 from last year i think the the fit and finish the infinity crown and then the feel of that club definitely much better yeah like it's it's good <laughs> yeah it's i know really that was good. one i remember we did this discussion similar to this right away i think in february maybe um and it was kind of like a first impressions early fittings you know what have you seen type of thing and i know qi 10 the ls ferry what or qi 10 tour maybe it's called mm -hmm. yeah. um was one that you had called out right away yep. and so uh i guess it's you know obviously encouraging to see that it's still there for mm -hmm. them um because that's the they still have the sliding weight in that one where yep. it's yeah the, yep. remember that that idea was first first came out was it two years ago with the original stealth plus or was it stealth two plus that it that so sliding weight was there it was stealth two plus okay where we got the the 50 gram sliding weight yeah which i was all excited about but then i found it to be maybe not as good feeling as i wanted it to be because i was playing the stealth and was excited okay. to see what the stealth two was going to be like and stealth was <laughs> you want to pick up a you want to pick up a just a an absolute bomber for not a huge amount of money there you can go back to that stealth the tour, stealth that plus yeah awesome that stealth plus yeah was yeah great um but yeah qi 10 is really really good okay yeah the qi 10 i know you get you get to this part too where some of the brands have like models that are 
with bonded hosels and some yeah. aren't, which I know is, again, you want the most flexibility you can get as a fitter. So, yep. you, you know, you want the ones with the adjustable hosels, which most, I think, at this point with, you know, three wood, five wood, you're going to get adjustability, but yeah. some still limit you a little bit there, yeah. right? Well, yeah, with with the AI smoke, you've got adjustability in the three and four wood, three and three HL. Okay. And then everything else is, is bonded. Mm. Um, is that right? I think that's right. I think the five wood's bonded. I think, well, I think, like, the isn't the QI-10 three wood that's not the lowest spin is bonded yes the regular yeah. the regular qis are right. are bonded yeah yes so i i guess point being there's you prefer to work with somebody that is going to fit into kind of one of these either low spin ones or the ones that are have that adjustability there in the sense of just given just as a fitter you have more to play with yeah i like the i like the idea of hey this fairway wood is doing really good things now let's get it out on the golf course and see what it does and oh if it's you know going too far and we need to scale it back we have that ability or it's not going far enough right. and we want to scale it up we can we can do that with a bonded head obviously you can't do that um right well you can but it's when i was a Tour a lot player. harder, yeah. When I was a tour player, I watched him break fairway wood after fairway wood trying to get these things the way I wanted them. So, yeah. So you're saying that's technically an option, but not really. Yes, technically, not really. Okay, yeah. technically, not really. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so good. We got some good feedback on that one. Um, I fitters have said the same thing about the QI ten tour. It's just it's a rocket, yep. And then you get again, you get some more versatility with it too. Yeah. Um, how about hybrids and or utility irons? There's been kind of a little bit of both this year in terms of new releases. I know TaylorMade's got the, you know, the the P U D I and D H Y that they added to their repertoire. Yeah. So anything that has jumped out at you in that realm? Um, hybrids, Cobra King Tech. Mm -hmm. I know you love that one. <laughs> Everybody loves that one. I mean, it's just it's a consistent, consistent performer. It's the only one that we really have the ability, other than TSR three, to put weight in the toe for those who have a tendency to overcook a little mm, bit to the left, yeah. which has been which the big thing with hybrid, thing, yeah. right? So anything that that fights that tendency is great. But we also can put it in the heel for those that are hanging it out to the right. So um, again, adjustability, love that. I just think the 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 Cobra, the look, the feel, the sound, and the numbers have been really really great. Ping stuff again, really, really great. Going all the way down to a seven hybrid, yeah, um, which is a big deal, I think. It I mean, is. Especially, I yeah. think we're as golfers getting more and more educated on sort mm -hmm. of, you know, launch and spin characteristics of irons plus lofts getting stronger. I think yeah. there's going to be more and more of a need for six hybrids, seven hybrids, mm -hmm. nine woods, yeah, potentially an eleven wood, yeah, um, or even getting hybrids into the eight, maybe, um, where a lot more players are going to be ordering those because. Not necessarily that they need them, but they just perf will get better performance out of them versus like a seven iron, six iron. Absolutely. And, you know, Callaway's done a great job over the last couple of generations getting a shape that's like really attractive. Um, and now they offer a ton of different, you know, numbers there mm -hmm. in their in their hybrids. So we, we can fit pretty much anything there. Um yeah, those are those are really kind of the the primaries. I'm yeah. sure the we'll get new Titleist stuff. I'm assuming it's going to be in the spring. Usually the hybrids come yeah. after the fairway woods and if drivers. The, so. If the cycle is to be yeah. continued from the past, yeah. yeah. So so we'll see what see what those bring. But yeah, yeah the the hybrid game, Ping Cobra, Callaway. Okay. those are. Those are really the ones. Yeah, not the not any uh, surprising suspects there. Yeah, in that not, one, you know? no, um, not that Taylor made stuff wasn't good. It was good. Is good. Um, yeah, mm, yeah. Um, irons now. I kind of I still do want to split up into categories, yeah. like subcategories of the iron category. If if that's good with you, it's fine. Um, want to start with the longest irons or the shortest irons? Game improvement. Players. Yeah, let's, let's start with game improvement. Yeah. Game improvement irons. Um, I so I remember this from our first discussion, kind of like this. You know, five months ago mm -hmm. was you had Cleveland Zipcore XL mm -hmm. as a 
uh, model to watch this year. Has that still kind of been the, a, a big performer in this category? Yeah, it's been good. The I, I suppose if there's any kind of an issue with it, it is at least indoors sound wise, the auditory response is a little more distinct. Okay. So um, whether that's something that bothers an individual or not, you know, kind of just kind of depends. Yeah. I like, I still like the golf club a lot. I think it's a good looking club. It's very nice size. Lots of, you know, good feels standing over the golf ball. Um, so it's been it's been good. There's a lot of great golf clubs in there. Ping coming out with the 730. Um, again, a little bit of an auditory response sure. with, with that. But looks like a ping, performs like a ping. Uh, it's done very, very well. Uh, just adds to the, the options for those those ping people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, 430 has been a very good performer. QI has been a very good performer. Um, Callaway has been good as long as we're able to get enough either height or spin. Oh, yeah. Is that that's, kind of one of the lower just, spin? Yeah, it's just it's better than the paradigm was. Um, but I've still had issues with creating enough enough spin yeah. and or trajectory to get that landing angle where I really want it to be. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm obsessed with with the landing angle number. So because we, we got to be able to make these things stop. Right. You know, we're playing everything except the driver. We're really playing to a number. So, you know, whatever that number is going to be, I want it to be able to be there and done. Yeah. Don't worry about what happens after the ball lands because you should, in theory, you're supposed to know kind of and trust yeah. it's going to do the same thing every time. Exactly. So, exactly. yeah, that's um, that's good. That's good feedback on that. Um, glad to hear about <clears throat> some of those, you know, companies that we're kind of used to seeing in, yeah. in these conversations up there. Um, players distance irons. There's been a little bit of a shakeup in the sense of, you know, releases there and like the, you know, the, I guess the P790 has been around for a while now, mm-hmm. but I imagine still one of the better performers. Of course. Um, we did have um, the, I guess, I don't know if this qualifies for players distance or not, but like the Apex Pro from last fall. Um, so where are you with the this category? So this is a big one because there's so many offerings, right? right. It's, there, it's become it's, the quickly the most like, oh, it has, um, I don't know, populated. Yeah. It, category it makes it difficult because right. you know you kind of want to you know you kind of want to show off the category right so you're looking at Strixon zx5 great looking iron great performance you're looking at mizuno jpx forged and quite frankly the hot metal <laughs> pro you're looking at cobra forge tech or forge tech x if you really want to hit it like crazy miles long. <laughs> like a mile um you've got titleist t200 you've got ping i530 which also kind of you can also kind of throw the 230 in there because it's yeah there's I mean, a little it's, bit it's of those still a pretty fast face um you got p790 and then you've got the well we'll see how things go when we get the this new apex in. i'm looking forward to the new actual apex yeah um because that the apex was such a huge club yeah. for for so many people and the face was so good and it's so good looking and then all of a sudden it like disappeared we haven't had it for like 18 months yeah it's just not been in the lineup right so we got the pro okay um but the regular apex well, that apex has been a staple for callaway for i mean it's bigger the first one was what 2016 2016 yeah, and it's been a staple in the Callaway lineup yeah. for a while. So yeah, it was a little surprising due, for it to be gone. We're due now. for the Apex um, to make a return or, yeah. or whatever model would fit in that line. It it is. is they, our rep brought them in. Mm, okay. Yeah. So we all right, we got something to look forward to. Yes. Um. So on that end, with all those options, and then <clears throat> is there a, like one that's performing best, or one that you see is is you know being I guess. Um, loved by golfers in the bays more than others, or is it right now? I'm doing a lot with the i530. Really? Yeah. Um, Pings seems to have <laughs> shockingly hit it on the hit it right on the head with that one too. Yeah. Um, P790s still very 
requested. Uh, Strixon really gets a gets a good look. Uh, still not as many people asking for it. I but suppose, yeah, just we brand recognition on that. try to throw it in there because it is such a good iron. Um, and all the rest, you know, they're 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 all great golf clubs. So yeah. it's just hard to put somebody through seven or eight different heads right. in a fitting. No, like, we only got an hour, right? Well, so. that and it's like <laughs> this category, I mean, what, 10 years ago, would you say? is probably 10 to 12 years ago. It wasn't really even a thing. Players distance yeah, iron. It was, there was, there was probably clubs that would you know fit into what we consider that, but mm-hmm. at the time, a player's distance category yeah. didn't really exist. I picked up P790s for my first PA Open win in 2018. Okay, so that was that was the one that kind of launched this whole thing. Yeah, was was the 790. Uh, talk about a revolution, man! It's crazy. Yeah, and uh, now you got how many models from you know? There's they're all over the place. Yeah, in in the, in the tour van bay so uh players distance irons i-530 getting a lot of love you know you still got your mizunos your cobras your mm-hmm. uh p790 t200s are all in there so a um, lot of love there for sure and if you're a player i mean really a lot of players almost any golfer that plays somewhat regularly could get some benefit out of them one way or the other of course yeah so uh, now we get to the irons that won't necessarily benefit every player, <laughs> players' irons. And yeah. so this is another kind of wide. It's almost broken itself into two categories here, too. Yeah. Because there are the kind of the, I would say, I-230 type iron mm-hmm. where it's a little bit um, it's still distance oriented in some respects, but still has kind of that look and sort of that feel, too, of a player's iron. So um, any of those jumping out at you this this year so far? So, I mean, the bl- the new blueprint is just an incredible iron and the ability to with the blueprint t the blueprint s and the i230 all having the same lofts being able to blend those in to create that set of all right i want my four and five iron to be a little more forgiving then i really want you know six seven eight to to have a little bit of forgiveness and then i can go into nine and nine and wedge and then more of a blade that's just a great way to go about about things that speak coming from someone who has that that kind of makeup in their bag you know yeah you got the the progression from you know larger kind of more forgiving iron in the five iron down to a cavity type in the six seven and then eight down and there's a lot of people that want that look they want that club that doesn't have the thick top line you know maybe a little bit more compact doesn't want to see a huge amount of offset but man it's like they're just not quite there and they recognize that they're not quite there yep well they can have they can they can still have that you know the shortest clubs the easiest ones we we can we can do that and then we just blend it up from there so again you know mizuno the two four threes and the two four ones um great combination set Mm -hmm. um mc mbs taylor made yeah titleist cobra cobra callaway yeah they're they're all great golf clubs is uh is the shrix on still is the x7 still getting a ton of love yeah the sevens seven's an interesting one too because um the one we don't at least i haven't done a whole lot with is the is the z blade right Um, uh z forged or whatever they call it yeah z forged it's really it's a good long blade iron so it's not like it doesn't have some forgiveness to it but it seems like the sevens the one that that the better players grab the wild to. thing to me i feel like there's a and from just looking at them there's a lot of separation between the zx7 uh mark ii and the z4 is like in size i feel like the top line yeah. of the zx7 is rather i want to say thick but it's of that category it's probably a little bit wider than most it is and that's maybe the only the only kind of yeah and i think they did dark that mark blend. on that whole yeah. thing is that the, the seven the the previous gen seven was a little thinner looking yeah um, i think they did that to blend zx5 zx7 so i get closer together yeah. with the mark ii series yeah which i mean because they've done a great job of that i mean they look they you have, could, you yeah could, you could you could show two to me right now and i might not be able to tell you which one's which um and so i think that's if i were to knock something again that we have said thousands of times that 
the look of an iron, look of anything is player preference. Yes, um, absolutely. But the ZX7 is a little bit thicker than most in this sort of compact cavity head category. So but for its for for that category, the face is so fast. Mm, yes, that like, one Mizuno Pro two four three is the same way. Yeah, um, those two are probably the two longest of the of the group. Yeah, if you would, if you were, yeah, to ask for me. sure. I think they're both thirty two degrees too. I mean, so's the so's the i two thirty. Yeah, but for some reason, I seem to think of the other two as being maybe they probably are faster. faster. Yeah, um, because you, you know the pings never been in this in this category never been. They're not chasing distance. Yeah. they might build that way and they might perform that way, but you know it seems like they, you know the the. The Micromax grooves on there are designed mm-hmm. for spin and spin consistency. So, you know, and that's, again, it just seems like that construction is really geared less toward distance versus what we've got with those other two. But, yeah, um, yeah still really good. I mean, there's so many good options, as you said. So um, if you're in a, if you're a better player, more, you know, maybe a little handicap player, need an iron set, get fitting. And, uh yes. You know, someone like Kevin at Columbia or any of our stores, uh, there's, you're going to be able to test any of those those club heads. And so what we didn't mention, too, is Bettinardi. I know you've you've made some comments just that since we've been here yeah. on Bettinardi, and, and now they're in the iron game. Um, and, uh, I mean, thinking, I mean, they're not going to be in terms of popularity. You're probably not going to get to this level of any of these. But No, I don't think that was the intent either, right. though. Um, yeah, the, I it's kind of gotten some mixed reviews from from my guys in in Colombia. I personally thought look feel sound was was really good. Yeah. Um a couple of the purists are like eh, doesn't feel well, as, purists. Doesn't, doesn't feel as soft as a mira, you know. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. What, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, yeah, does it feel like a mira? I mean, how many players are playing mira irons? Some. 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 Can't blame them either. No, you can't. I mean, talk about straight butter. Yes. So the (laughs) KM700s. We're getting Kevin fired up here. So uh, (laughs) wedges now? Yeah. um, So I know we've talked about in the wedge category, obviously the SM10s, all the options on everything. Um, S159s from Ping as well in there um any other maybe i want to say dark horse but anything maybe that's a little off the radar that we wouldn't maybe think of that you might want to throw in there or not really i mean no. there's not there's not i mean there, there, there really isn't um obviously Vokey's still dominating that category uh the s159s love the new black finish yes i think that's really good i'm glad they brought that back out my favorite wedge i think of all time the was, the, one that they was had. the yeah yeah, yeah, with the Glide 2.0. Yeah, that's right. Stealth, stealth. love those wedges. Never should have gotten rid of those wedges. Um, hmm. so I that said, I don't have them in my. I don't have the pings in my bag yet. You just never. You never know. Uh, well, I know. If, I mean, <laughs> if you, we should know by now that if you're not playing something, that doesn't mean anything about like if you like it or don't, yeah. because you know. So look, when it comes to wedges and putters. I'm going to move things around. Yeah. That's just how I went through three sets of wedges last year, not because I wore anything out. I don't play enough to wear anything out. <laughs> and I went through a copious number of putters. Now, I'm feeling much better. I'm only, I'm on, I'm putter that's in my bag right now has been in my bag almost since September last year. So that is, I mean, what if we make it to a whole like year with the same two, putter? Two rounds I tried a different putter this year. That's it. Two what rounds. If, what if we make it a whole year? I don't know if that's possible. Yeah. I also I should note since we're on this topic, I may have met your match in terms of um, swapping out clubs. Uh, oh, Paul, I got a few in Columbia that Paul Sorolski. Yeah, he said last year. Well, I shouldn't say last year. The year before, played a dozen drivers in oh, 2022, wow. but he put uh, he put G430 LST in the bag when that came out, and that has been that has stuck with him. But wow. he's like he's like that is the greatest testimonial anybody could give on ping is. That I have played the same driver for a year and a half now. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so yeah. So like, if you look at me, I used one driver in twenty two, one driver in twenty three. Yeah. And technically, I'm on two 
this year because I started out with an LS. That's right. I do remember. And then that. I went away from the LS and went to the X because I don't need, need low spin. No, no, yeah. I would. I do need low spin. I don't need extra low spin. <laughs> yeah. At this point. Right. So and give me some forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the uh, the standard, I guess, dark speed X will do. Yeah. But no, I thought that was. We were doing a actually a shoot the other day, and Paul joined us, and you know he's a he's an online fitter for us. Yeah. And yeah, and I was like, well, I That's I awesome. may have met somebody that can keep <laughs> up with Kevin's club swaps. It's club just short. Changes. It's just short game stuff for me. I just I I don't really make that many changes when it comes to yeah. uh, to everything I just, else. I mean, yeah, I switched some stuff up for the senior open this week, but that was that was situational. That was right, right. that was something that it kind of demanded that it happened. Yeah. There just wasn't a place for me to hit the burner mini driver. Yeah. Which at all. I wanted to ask you about that. The burner mini, did you try the copper one this year? I hit it a few times, Is but that, did you notice like I mean, I really you didn't. stuck with the old one or yeah. the old one, the, yeah, I the last year's one. There's no, for me, there was no real need to, to switch. To switch? I okay. like the copper color. It's fine. But mine right. looks great, too. No, yeah. I have also hit the new Callaway one. And? It's good. It's good? It's good. Is it? Okay. So, because we did, we've done some testing on mm -hmm. both together. The Callaway one's bigger, I think, in volume. So, might go a little further be more forgiving and a little bit in that regard, but off the tee or excuse me, off the deck. I don't know. Might again. Yeah. That club's not designed. I feel like the burner is more designed for, like, for off the ground. I don't think either of them's really designed well, for off the ground, but yeah, there is the option to be able to do it. Right. When, yeah. when driver heads got to four sixty, that's when I stopped even trying to hit driver off the deck. I'm like, oh. I'm just out. If I can't get there with a three wood, I'm out. Well, I hit now I've got the, the burner mini driver, and I can hit that thing. You know, I've got mine at 11 and a half. I can get it up yeah. off the deck. It's not going to be a towering shot. And right. if there's a big wall face bunker in the front, it's if it does get there, it's not stopping, and most likely it's just going to go into the bunker. So you know, some strategery is kind of important right. to maybe just lay up when – Laying up is called for. I, uh, I hit driver off the deck from the rough a couple days ago. What? Yeah. From the rough? From the rough. The camera guy's laughing at wow. me. <laughs> okay. So I had a lie at the senior open. It was, you know, when I was saying from the rough, I could have hit I think from it's, the rough. But I think it's because of the lie I had. You know, I'm not playing like a, not playing a U.S. Open rough where like the ball sinks down. It was sitting up on the grass. So I was oh, like, I had one that was so far so up. I was 275 away into the wind. And I'm like, what am I going to do here? If I'm not hitting driver, I'm laying up. So I might as well hit driver. And I hit it, you know, probably it was a little worm burner, a little fade that I was still short of the green. So I hit a little flip wedge in. My lie was so good. I couldn't, I, I got under it with an eight iron. Like I clanked it off the, like the top three grooves and, and it didn't go very far, uh, but I could have hit driver off of that lie yeah. without any problem. That's what that was. That, I'm yeah. thinking that's the kind of lie that, that I you don't get that very often, though. No, you don't. No, but you know that's because I don't miss many fairways anymore. Well, there you go. I'm missing the fairway. Good on, <laughs> good on you. <laughs> um, round out with putters. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts. Okay. Kind of on the so while we're on the putters thing and this trend of <clears throat> longer putters, because I've been playing the Jailbird, and my putting is definitely better. Um. Are you fitting a lot of players into that? Are you getting a lot of good feedback on that? Yeah, there's we get we get quite a bit. It is definitely the the fastest growing segment is the the longer putters, whether it's really? going broomstick or whether it's going you know thirty eight inches. Um, I have not gotten there myself. I have I, I gave it a shot, gave it a whirl, didn't really connect with it very well, and went back to conventional. Is there because I as you especially right? You'll try anything, and if it works, you're going to play it. Is there something that didn't work for that? In I just, particular, or was it just a uh, word comfortable with the feel of it? Honestly, it's going to probably more than anything, the 38 inches was too long, sticking into my gut. <laughs> so there's that. Um, broom handle, I can't seem to take the putter back straight at all. Really? Uh, it's 
wobbly all oh, over the, the, the place. Oh, the, the one like this. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I can't. Yeah, I, I, I can't, can't seem either. to make that one work. We did. A, we did a, if you, can, you can check this out on the YouTube channel. There's some insider scoop here or whatever. But like, we did a video on like you know some of the trending long yeah. putters this year, and we went did the lab room stick, and I'm sitting there. As we're as we're filming the video, I'm like, I have no idea how to set up for this thing. Like, I, do I do this? Do <laughs> exactly I, how I feel. Point about the elbow. What do I do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I I just haven't been able to to make it work. I haven't spent enough time to like go. Okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna figure this out. A, I don't feel like I've needed to, thankfully, and yeah. and B, I just haven't had time. So, um, yeah, longer's longer's in right now. And lab is in right now. Yeah, lab is. It's they're on an incredible run. Well, at our we had an, a live interview with um, their CEO, nice uh, Sam Han, a few months ago by now. But um, that was a fascinating conversation. He has mm. good stories, and you know, there's a absolutely a method to the madness with that. You know, yeah. their designs. It's I all just, about science and the balance of the putter and. The the revealer is amazing, showing how everything spins except the lab putter stays yeah. nice and and steady. You know, it's it's very cool. It I think it will take some getting used to. And my biggest problem is I I, I don't like the grip. I do not like the grip that forward press grip. I just yeah. do not like that at all for myself. Uh, great for others. Fantastic. Look, this is golf, and it's all about what you like. It's all right. about what works for you. Um, I'm never, ever going to tell somebody that they shouldn't do something if they feel like it's... If they feel like it's working. Yeah, 100%. It's not about how. It's just about how many. So yeah. find something that works and roll with it. So, um, you know, if you, like, uh, if you like the lab but you don't like the, the, the press grip, get a conventional grip and see how, that, right. see how it goes that way. Yeah, I mean, the... Jailbird for me has done. I, I there's a certain confidence I have on anything that you would call a makeable range, which mm. my makeable range in quotes is probably a little shorter than yours. Um, but what's your makeable range? Twenty in. That's about where I'm at. Okay, where I like I step up to it and I get, I get that feeling way more where you step up to a putt and you're like I'm making this. I keep track of birdie opportunities during rounds and sometimes those birdie opportunities are four footers sometimes they're 20 footers probably not anything beyond 20 feet yeah really because they're not they're not ones that you should probably be standing up going yeah i really should be making this yeah or or after your round you're not like um well shoot i should have made that you know or uh, yeah my 75 is it's not a 74 because i missed this 25 footer yeah no right so (laughs) That's not a thing. But um, to your point, I think there's, you know, that that piece right there about 18, 20 feet. I've made a lot more of those this year. That's I'm more good. confident in those. Um, and then, then any, I mean, it, it really seems hard to miss that, that short putt, that five-footer, that four-footer. That's really good. It seems hard to miss those. Um, so it's like a, I almost, really the only reason I would is because I, think too much about a read if it's like a breaker and then i i've, I've tended to like start slamming these short putts in because i just know i'm gonna hit my line and then if i misread it hit it too hard lip out but um otherwise the putting's good so good. I, I i will i will endorse the longer putter setup okay if someone is teetering about their putting i will be absolutely in support of a longer putter something counterbalanced maybe like that i have the jailbird of course but there's plenty of different options out there from all kinds of brands when you look at when you look at a putter like steve stricker yes who is clearly one of the best putters we've seen in in golf um i watched him practicing with his normal putter and then i saw him in now, was he still the, using that in, same putter for like the, the one he'd been using for oh yeah that 20 little, years or that whatever. little odyssey yep. with the gooseneck yeah yep same putter uh toe down and but at the senior open he was in a 38 inch jailbird i believe yeah well it's because you saw me playing yeah it was it was it was all down to you yeah yeah steve stricker was like that the drew guy is playing a jailbird Mm -hmm. i better that's right gotta give it a whirl (laughs) yeah 
Uh, absolutely not. That could not be more wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, but still, it's it's the fad that's taken off. Um, any other m- models or series of putters? Done, I mean, we, we kind of had the discussion on long putters, but is there yeah. any series or, or models or you know no, anything I mean, that's people, jumping out at you? But I mean, because you mentioned putting is so personal preference and everything yeah, versus it's, other it's a little bit more than it's you know your way full all clubs. over the all way all over the place um cameron's obviously very popular betnardi is very popular ping putters uh pld's and and, yeah. and stuff are very very popular um odyssey and if you're somebody that likes one of the things that i always like to to get in to with people is do they like a firmer or a softer feel yeah and folks, people don't know. They have no clue, especially somebody that's been using a Cameron for 20 years. Yeah. You know, you, you throw an Odyssey at them, and you have them hit that, and then you have them hit a Cameron, and they're like, oh, actually, I actually think I like the softer better. Or they're like, nope, I just want to stick with this firmer feel. Yep. And that's that's totally individual. There is there's no way, shape, or form that yeah. I can or should ever influence anybody's uh, preference in terms of how the ball feels coming off the putter. I like a softer, faster feel. I want the ball to jump off the putter. I want it to feel really soft. So I've tended to not be as much of a a Cameron guy. Yeah, know? and that's they're a little firmer. Fitting those those things. Uh, if somebody's a softer, makes it a lot easier because there's not that many options. Um, I've had Bobby Grace putters. I've always loved Bobby Grace putters. Uh, they're if you're looking for a to soft feel, by the way. Yes, twenty twenty one or the ping, yeah, twenty twenty one putters. Yes, the hardwood, very especially. soft. Yeah, the hardwood. It's it's like you don't even f- hear anything, on like, like a ten foot like putt. Marshmallow. Yes, nice. Now I went a little firmer with the the jailbirds, a little bit firmer on and than that, mm-hmm. but um, and I still had to get used to that a little bit. But um, that thing, if you're looking for something soft, you hit a short, relatively short putt, and it won't even make a noise. Hmm. It's kind of cool, but. Again, only if you're looking for something soft. And it's also very, very large and spaceship looking. Yeah, that's the is that the one that sort of it's got three lines on three lines on the on the, on the top. On the and then it's like there. I don't know, it's like bigger than my face. <laughs> <laughs> I used it. I still have it. If if something were to go wrong or yeah. I was to lose confidence in my jailbird, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna stick with that because okay. I do like it. Nice. Um so yeah. but if you ever want to give us that is the softest putter I've. I think I maybe I've ever hit. So, okay. yeah. So yeah, but putters individual preference for sure. Okay. I mean, I start every every fitting with look around, see what you like. Find a putter that you like. Let's start there, and then we figure it out from that point. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's that's. I don't you gotta like you gotta like it. I don't care what it is, whether it's your driver, your fairway wood, your hybrid, your irons, your wedges, your putter, doesn't matter. You gotta like it. Right, golf is hard enough. If we're not looking down at something, going, "Oh, I hate this," right? That's not yeah. a positive. And there's so many thing. options now where that shouldn't yeah, even, that shouldn't should be on your mind. Never happen. It always amazes me when I get people that are like, "Yeah, I don't really care what it looks like." Oh, okay, cool. We'll go off numbers, right? That yeah. actually, in some ways, makes that is me with a wood. Easier. That's me with a wood in my hand. Really? Yep. Don't care what it looks like. Nope. You yeah. could put, you could put a big scratch or dent. I mean, dent to a point where the Perform if the performance suffered that way one thing, but if someone put a big, I don't know, if you wrote your name in like neon green marker on the crown of my driver, I would, I'd probably be fine with it. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> That's right. We got. Can we get a neon. We may, neon we may, or may not have a match coming up here that we're gonna film this week, so I should probably keep my clubs protected. But um, uh, all right, yeah. that's a good place to wrap it up. All right. So another another tease for the content we have coming yes um if it's not on the channel yet we've got some matches coming up we're doing some uh budget challenges we've got uh some challenges where kevin has built a bag already via one of our social media challenges and he's going to compete against my gamers and probably kick my butt so uh stay tuned to the youtube channel uh stay subscribed to the podcast if you're not otherwise if you haven't subscribed make sure you do on whatever platform you're listening on kevin Thank you for for joining. Yeah. Always a pleasure.